interested in the unconditional basic income when we're doing research for the Universal Periodic Review. Uh, the, the UPR, as you know, is a mechanism of the Human Rights Council where every member state of the United Nations gets reviewed on the human rights record every four to five years. So we want to make recommendations that are meaningful, that would have a long and lasting impact, and we, f we feel that in one of the ways we can help people in, in countries around the world that we want to make recommendations to is to ask governments to initiate a conversation on the universal basic income. Because when we were doing our research on the UBI and we saw the evidence and all the, uh, the plans that were made in various countries around the world, particularly in countries of the South, countries closer to our demographic and closer to our economic standing, we, and we saw the results of those plans that were made by NGOs and governments on sort of, I guess, free money, so to say, as they call it. We saw that, um, that it actually helped people, that people are want to do certain things to better their lives. It's not a matter of the social programs that we have now, where you, if in order to access these things, which on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, every human has access to housing, uh, security, adequate food, and so on and so forth. The way our social program is structured now, you have to jump to a specific sort of uh, hoops so you have to jump through. You, know, you have to file paperwork, you have to go to this office, you have to do that and this. And we feel like it's not really beneficial for people in order to access these human rights that are enshrined and agreed upon by every member states to go to hoops in order to get what they need to, to have a basic standard of living. And we saw that if you just give people unconditionally the money that they need to survive, they will, on average, uh, the vast majority will make the right decisions to better themselves, to better their families, and, and to also help the economy as well. In 2012, Haiti initiated the largest and most structured social assistance program in its history. The program is called EDEPEP, it's a Creole meaning help the people. And so it's, it's, a, it's one program centered around a myriad of programs, centered around adequate housing, access to food, and the main uh, mission of the program is to alleviate extreme poverty. Uh, so from 2012 to 2014, I'll give the results off the bat. Uh, extreme poverty went from 31% to 24%. So in that, mean, in, in that period of time, to the media of programs, one, uh, large but, uh, one small but important aspect of the, of the uh, ADPEP program was unconditional cash transfers to single mothers and, and the elderly. So we, about 100,000 families a month were given these unconditional cash transfers and doing the results and the research about the program in this three-year period, it was shown that these transfers did more to help alleviate poverty than, say, just giving people stuff or, or just um, making them do certain things in order to access uh, these, social, uh, these rights that are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So it's, it's also a lot less red tape, a lot less uh, money being spent on putting these programs into place. You just have the money there, you give it to these families, and they themselves, in the situation that they are, of course, will want to better their lives. And then so they send their kids to school, they buy them the school supplies that they need, and they also re-enter uh, that money into the economy as well. So, you know, you to put uniforms for kids, you go to the the tailor to do that, to buy school supplies, you go to the local shop in order to buy food, you buy local products as well. So that money also re-enters into the economy and it helps Haiti as well build, build its economy um, up again. In the UPR session, we just decided to start recommend, recommending to member states to initiate a conversation on the universal basic income. It's an old idea, but it's one of the most transformative ideas of the 21st century. Um, and we think that if we push a certain number of countries to sort of consider the idea and sort of start a conversation on, on the UBI, we feel like more mindsets will be changed, more people will look at the evidence, more people would, would say like, hey, this is one way to do developmental assistance, this is one way to help our people. And, and, we, and if other countries start to see that idea and that uh, idea of implementing the UBI, then it would start to catch catch fire and uh, I think then Haiti will be more interested than countries that are, are, are helping us with our, our, our national uh, governmental finance will see that yes we should just uh, maybe cancel all these other programs and give money directly to, uh, to the Haitian people. So we asked, so far we've asked three member states, Seychelles, Singapore and Ireland to consider this conversation on the UBI. 
Uh, so far, I can tell you the results are not good. <laughs> but it, the UPO process goes that when you, when you receive a recommendation, you can either accept it, say yes, we will kind of, uh, commit resources to implement this recommendation, or you can either know what it's saying. Thank you for the recommendation, but we won't consider it at the time. And, and so far, a uh, few states have uh, said that they will not consider it, uh, our recommendation on the UBI at this time. But we feel like if we keep pushing the idea, and we will in the future, in the up upcoming UPR sessions, always keep pushing the idea to a certain number of member states. And we hope that amongst the United Nations system, that idea will also be a not a fringe idea, but one of the main principles of, of, uh, of developmental assistance. Right, so the, the, the program, the ADPEC program, was uh, initiated in 2012 and it's under this government agency called FAES. It's F A E S, and that stands for Fund Assistance Economique et Sociale, which is the Economic and Social Program of Haiti, Economic and Social, Pro, uh, Social Fund. So th that uh, agency is financed by a myriad of, of, of donors. So you have Haiti's is one of the, the Haitian government itself is one of the largest donors. You have the Canadian Agency for International Development. You have the European Union, and you also have the World Bank, and also a myriad of other countries that pitch in and, and, and send the money to the Ministry of Economy and FIES under the Ministry of Economy, and then they distribute that money uh, to, to FIES. So there are a lot of agencies interested in this program and they of course line item their donations for particularly for FIES and normally the, the, the ADPEP program costs around $76 million a year and, and we feel like that money is a really beneficial for us, it's helped us a lot and the results the agencies see themselves has helped uh, alleviate poverty, especially extreme poverty and we, we see uh, donations and funding continuing for, for said program. Yes, we always, uh, there's always uh, a fear that donors will cut back in funding or say we want our money to go to some other place. But I think if they look at the facts, they look at the evidence and how the social program has helped a lot of Haitians. Uh, the ADPEP program has reached 2 million Haitians, that's 20% of our population. And, and so from the period of 2012 to 2014, 200,000 Haitians have been risen from a level of extreme poverty. So yes, that is a fear, but as these social programs continue and as Haitians continue to better their lives, we, we hope that in the very near future they become less reliant on the social programs and become entrepreneurs, uh, send their kids to school to access to better jobs, and, and, and in that way we rely less and less on um, on, on social assistance from, 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 the, from the Haitian government. Um, one of the ways that we try to, another way to try to tackle the issue is to, uh, the, of course, the UPR. So a lot of countries have ODAs, overseas developmental assistance, and if we sort of push them to this view of the way the humanitarian, humanitarian limit is done now is it's a broken system. The World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul that happened last week was uh, uh, a statement that yes, the humanitarian system is broken and to fix it. We want to sort of have the mindset of unconditional cash transfer is one way to help countries uh, in dire need of humanitarian assistance. It's not just about sending people and sending uh, uh, these, these sort of uh, machines and things and doctors and nurses and medical supplies. It's about it, investing in the economy that you already have there and making the national government stronger and better and more resilient to humanitarian disasters that may come in the future. So if we sort of push that money directly to the people, the people know themselves what they have to do.